All right, welcome back. Yeah, so um, I just spent way too much time here uh, trying to get the cork out of this wine bottle. Go figure, I don't have a wine opener. And, oh, there's the rice, ready. So I spent like 15 minutes trying the hammer method. I looked up online, there's all sorts of different methods. I got to the point where um, I may just pour this wine in a bag. I think I got to the point where the wine will pour out of here. Uh, yeah, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad, not gonna lie. This is how much of the cork I took out right here. Uh, but welcome back, we're making chicken. Uh, and, uh, yeah, let's just uh, get uh, this cylinder put away. I really need a, a cork here now. I mean, watch, there's one in here. No, there was not one in here. Makes me feel slightly better about this mishap. Um, so, let's close this. Put that away, don't need that anymore. And uh, we got the wine, and we needed two tablespoons of wine. So I think I have a tablespoon measure over here. Yeah. I've only used this like twice, and already the measurement thing came off. That's why I bought these, but whatever, it works still. Um, so I've got this, and I'm going to need to put this somewhere. I'll use this cup for tea as a container for the wine. Yeah, there'll be a little bit of cork in here. Not the worst. Oh no! No! Okay, so, we still have some cork left in here. Freaking hell. Oh, it's spurting like crazy. Oh, I think the cork fell through. All right. Oh, man. Okay. Cork can't kill you, right? Oh, no, it didn't fall through. Come on. You stupid wine bottle. Cork. Maybe I need to hold it down while I pour it. Come on. There we go. One, two. Okay, a little, little bit of cork with my dinner. <laughs> oh crap, I need to get this cork out. It's a little bit too much though. I'm too not comfortable with that much cork. All right, so, sorry about that noise. Okay, we got, we got the wine, mostly wine, little cork in there. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I'm going to set it aside for now. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. So anyway, uh, let's continue on with this recipe. All right, so we got our wine ready. So next we need the... Uh, oops. Let me get back to the right page here. Okay, let's get to the actual cooking part now. Uh, that was the... There was an FAQ for this recipe? Jeez, this is comprehensive. Um, so... Again, we're making chicken stew, um, Tuscan style. Storage and meal prep, no, I don't care about that. Stick in, thickening ingredient notes. Reason you'll love the stew, no. Wait, is there no part in here that actually tells you how to make it? Um, chicken thighs. Cooking, okay. The beauty, there's no saute step. I'm, all, I'm a big fan of no saute step. This means you can get the recipe in the Instant Pot and ready to cook in under 15 minutes. To cook the recipe, assemble the chicken, vegetables, chicken stock, wine, fennel seeds, salt, and rosemary. Stir to combine, then place the lid on the Instant Pot, set the steam release to sealing, then press, then pressure cook on high pressure for 10 minutes. Um, oh shit, oh yeah, that's, there's basically no cooking here. Um, all right, so let's see. Assemble the chicken, vegetables, chicken stock, wire, wine, fennel, seeds, salt, and rosemary. Now, do we need to cut the chicken first is the ultimate question here. They don't allude to cutting. Let's see. Um, let's see what this looks like. I'm scrolling down to see what this looks like in the Instant Pot. Yeah, I mean, what does that look like to you? That looks like they just threw the chicken thighs into me. Yeah, I'm going to go with just through the chicken thighs in because that makes it easier for me. So let's get the Instant Pot out. All right. God, it's all over the place. All right. 
throw that over there. You can save counter space here. All right. And instant pot. Your time is come. Oh, why is this so heavy? Oh, God. Protein powder, get out of there. Okay. All right, we have the instant pot. I still have like five pounds of cooked ham in the freezer, by the way. I need to figure out something to do with that. Uh, here we go. Instapot is out. Let's unplug the blender for now. Use that same one. All right. Oh man, I got messed up. Eh, yeah, just the outside. I'll do extra cleaning on this later. I don't want to mess with it right now. It looks pretty good inside. Pretty clean. Okay, so um, instant pot, what are we throwing in again? All right, so two, no saute. Assemble the chicken, vegetables, chicken stock, wine. Okay, so chicken, let's just, I wanna put the chicken stock in first, actually. Maybe that makes the most sense. And I forgot about the chicken stock. So let's go down here and look for chicken stock. And one and three fourths cup chicken stock. All right, I'm just going to put two bouillon cubes in there. I'm not going to be super specific about it. Um, it's going to be a little bit more chickeny. Yeah, so. Here we go. I'm a big fan of bouillon cubes. Good way to save money. If you actually buy chicken stock, you can make it yourself. That's the ultimate way, right? But uh, if you actually go and buy it, it's very expensive. Um, all right, let's see. Got the bullion cubes out. By the way, just to avoid any confusion, because I heard this comment come up today in a call I had, I'm not the same Jason Camillo, who is the famous Australian chef. Um... <laughs> That guy can cook much better than me, although he doesn't have 360 videos yet. Um, I am the amateur cook who has no idea what he's doing, Jason Camillo. So, all right, let's, uh, one and three fourths cup. Get that water in. One. Okay, and then. Three of these, one fourth, two fourths, three fourths. Okay, cool. Well, the reason why I don't like this is it always just defaults to, oh, actually, that's not bad. Somehow they always collapse on each other and they can't dry out that way. That actually worked out there. Okay, so I got that. Okay, that's in there. Now let's put the chicken in. Close that. Oh, just something to share first. So I got this, uh, these mason jars, and I have some strawberry puree. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do some matcha tea uh, soon with this. Uh, it's like one of those multi-layer drinks. That'll be fun. Uh, anyway, there we go. Boneless, skinless chicken thighs. These look pretty clean. They don't mention that they've cleaned it. Ah, oh, god dang it. Okay, I'm gonna need to rinse these before I throw them in. Okay, but take a look at these chicken thighs. That looks pretty clean to me. Very nice chicken thighs. Uh, so let's do a rinse. No real need to dry, I think, because there's water already in there, right? gonna shake it off right one shake it off two shake it off three I don't know, halfway down here on the chicken. 
the garbage. Look like really nice chicken thighs. Really nice. All right. So they recommend six to eight for the recipe. Um, they just happen to not have them in the butch at the butcher behind the counter of the supermarket, so I had to buy these prepackaged ones. But you had eight, so good enough for me. I'll go the eight option. More chicken anyway. More protein. Okay, and one more. All right. That's washed. Throw that out. All right. Wash my hands really quick. So, uh, boom, that's in there. What else do we need to put in there? Got the chicken stock. We have the chicken. Everything else we have ready to go. Uh, up here. Oops. Down. Cooking. Okay, here we go. Chicken, vegetables, chicken stock, wine. Let's just throw the wine in. No, no, get out of there, cork. Minimal cork. Okay, the wine is in. All right, and uh, it just says vegetables. I guess that means throw everything in. Um, yeah, let's fucking do it. Throwing it all in. I want to do this semi neatly, right? Start with the potatoes. Work our way from left to right here. Potatoes in. All right. Garlic. All right, just so you can get to see more of what I'm doing, I just realized it's hard to see here. I lift it up, lifting up. All right, cool. Should be able to see better in there. Right. Tomatoes. Yeah, this already smells good. It's not even cooked yet. And it's going to smell great when it's cooked. Tomatoes going in. All right. Onions. That's a lot of onions. I think the onions are going to intersect a bit with the celery and carrots. It's going to be hard to separate that. But you know what? They all go in the same. Um, let's move that salt over there. Alright. Moving on to celery. Well, did it say to put the fennel seeds in? Um, yep. Yeah. Alright, cool. 
celery. It's beginning to look like a mess, so I'm screw it phase here. I'm just throwing in the carrots now. Carrots. Okay. Well, minus that carrot, which fell off the counter. Carrot. All right. All that's in. Good. All right, and now fennel seeds. Put that over. Yeah. Might as well get that in, right? Get it all in. Alright. Okay, and uh, salt. Spread that around. Get a good spread on the salt here. Alright. And uh, just plop this baby in, boom, like that. All right, there we go. So good. Pick up that carrot. All right, now that that's in, let's look at the next step. All right, so Set the steam release handle to sealing. Pressure cook on high for 10 minutes. That's it. Bothering me slightly. Hold on. Wipe that off. All right. So, steam release to sealed. It's unsealed. And you can't see what I'm doing here, but I'm going to be clicking on the pressure cook button. Moving up to 10 minutes, and boom, we are done. All right, so that's it. This is a pretty simple recipe to make. So when this is done, uh, I'll take a uh, take a video of what it looks like. Because I think what we have to do when uh, I'm gonna move this over because it's cutting out my head. Um, oh god, oops, sorry, motion sickness. Okay, warning. Too late, warning. Okay, um, so we have it going now. This should take like 20 minutes or so. So I don't know. I'll be eating closer to seven. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, we're cooking, uh, where does it say here? I mean, cause I need to wait once it's done. It takes about 10 minutes to get to pressure level, 10 minutes to cook. And then I need to let it naturally release for 10 minutes. So it's going to be like 30 minutes at 640. It'll be done with all that. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah, so then I'm going to let out the pressure and the last step here, which I'll probably do off camera is thickening the stew. Um, I don't know, might make a short video, screw it, I'll make a short video, it doesn't take me much more time to just push the on button. Uh, but after releasing the pressure, carefully remove the Instant Pot lid, then stir in the balsamic vinegar in a mixture of cornstarch plus water mixed into a slurry. Um, so yeah, we'll do that right beforehand and make another video out of that. Thanks for tuning in, this was actually a bit harder than I thought, uh, but have all my fingers, boom. That's all good. Um, still could probably salvage that wine. Let's take a look at the wine. We did take care of that cork, which um, is now in the bottle. <laughs> so, yeah, all right. Um, but um, maybe I can pour the wine into a Ziploc bag and then seal it in that it's for cooking, right? I mean, who cares? So, uh, anyway, thanks for tuning in. See you in part three. Later.